probably the biggest head turner in this segment. This sort of 350,000 Rand small compact SUV segment. Drives extremely well. Smooth as a whistle on the highway. For, for a car with 18 inch t uh, low profile tires, it's surprisingly smooth on the highway. It's, it's, it's equal to sort of S class Merc sort of territory, which is, which is impressive. Having said that, as soon as you hit any kind of gravel, it really feels out of place. These tires just aren't made for it. And once again, gets back to the to the point of specking cars properly for South African roads. You know, in Germany, with there's probably very few gravel roads in Germany, and all the roads are, are well maintained, so you can you can have low profile tires and and take um, advantage of the the so-called handling uh, advantages. But in South Africa, an 18-inch low profile tire it just doesn't make sense but that's easily fixed that the car itself is adequately powered this comes in a 1 litre turbo and a 1.5 litre turbo if you put it in it's all there the guts of the car really comes out on the highway when you an overtaking speed around 80, 100 kilometers an hour. It just cruises at relatively low revs. It's not quite big enough if you got three children in the back. Uh, you're gonna run out of space. The boot's not the biggest in the world. So this is ready for, for singles, for people with small families who like to who like to get outdoors. It's got good ground clearance. So put some decent tires on here and you'll you'll certainly be covered off-road on gravel and whatnot. Extremely good navigation on this car. The Germans always make very good maps. It, it's got a, a, a slightly panned out map, so you can see the bigger picture. I, I find a lot of the times with with cars that the, the map on the GPS is too close. So you, you don't get to see the, the side roads, the other other options. So best in class GPS, I'd say, comfortably. Handling is sensational, car-like handling from a from a tallish SUV or compact SUV. On acceleration, there's a bit of turbo lag because being an only a one litre, it, it it takes a little bit of time to get going. But once you bury it in, once it gets its feet, it's One thing I did notice is this doesn't have the active cruise control. It's just got regular cruise control, which is, um, I guess they're not going to put this, they're going to have a reason for you to buy the Tiguan. So but they haven't put all the latest high tech in here to differentiate itself from, from some of the, some of the models higher up in the VW range, but that's fine. It's got a handbrake, ladies and gentlemen. It's got a handbrake. Well done, VW, for listening to your customers and putting that back in there. Because the handbrake is a safety tool and an electronic one that kind of defeats the purpose of, of a manual override. So it feels very well built. The doors are heavy. I'm sure it's got five five star end cap rating economical I was getting 6.9 liters per hundred driving sort of normally and when I put the boots in a bit got to 8 liters per hundred k's which is which is not too bad at all and let's see what the handling is like around the corner perfect no tire squeal really is a pleasure the new VW T-Cross in terms of instrumentation is all on point. 
neatly laid out, very simple, easy to operate. The, the touch screen works the charm, nothing to fault. You've got a, a variety of different options for your, for your speedo and rev counter and heads up display. A little bit of hard plastic here on, on the on the dashboard. Um, I haven't really felt the, this, these sort of hard plastics on a on a VW R line of sort of this sort of spec. So a little bit hard for my liking. This is almost something you'd expect to find in an Amarok. It looks well well made. Smallish cubby hole, and they still got a CD player. Um, I'm not sure what that's all about. But you got two USBs up front, smallish glove box, two, two drink holders in the middle. Well, well laid out, well thought of. So these are coming in at 350,000 Rand for the R line, which is not that much money for the, for the amount of car you're getting here. I would like to see this with an all-wheel drive version with, with 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 sort of higher profile tires and I think it would be quite handy off-road because it does have pretty good clearance. I think it's got about 180 mils, so definitely can get over the pavement with that. Comfortable cloth seats, the buckets aren't too tight, so if you've got a little bit of a love handle, yeah let's see the acceleration off the line. And then the turbo comes in. Generous back seats, double USB, good leg room. Boots easy enough to open, not the biggest in the world. Very nice interior. There's the handbrake we've been hearing so much about. Simple functional layout. One thing I like is I still got manual hold, manual functions for the seat less to go wrong. Solid doors, you can hear when they're shut. That's a proper piece of kit. And it's got that R-line sport to it. All in all, one hell of a package, 10 out of 10.